Many young parents are getting to spend quality time with their children. That has never happened before, with the exception of vacation or holidays, maybe. That's pretty neat, isn't it? A young parent who has two children in daycare and that both parents work out of the home told me recently that this is the first time that he felt he and his wife knew their children better than the daycare workers that care for their needs on a daily basis. The the reality is those workers spend quality time with the children and would get to share some pretty neat experiences with their children and give the parents a report at the end of each day. Parents have now gotten to experience things with their children in the past three months that would not have up until now. The normal routine, wake up the children, dress the children, take the children to daycare, go to work, pick up the children from daycare, return home, spend a few hours together before collapsing, and then tomorrow start the day all over again. Hopefully you, like this young couple, have had actually had taken time to take advantage of this quality time with family during the pandemic. Psalm 127 in the message translation says this, if God doesn't build the house, the builders only build shacks. If God doesn't guard the city, the night watchman might as well nap. It's useless to rise up early and go to bed late and work your fingers to the bone. Don't you know he enjoys giving rest to those he loves? Don't you see that children are God's best gift? The fruit of the womb, his generous legacy. Like a warrior's fistful of arrows are the children of a vigorous youth. Oh, how blessed are the parents with your quivers are full of children. Your enemies don't stand a chance against you. You'll sweep them right off the doorsteps. Psalm 127 says that children are a gift from God. How powerful is that? Moms and dads, those children in your homes, whether naturally born or adopted, are gifts from God. What does it mean to be like a warrior's fist full of arrows? Think about that for a second. Arrows are used in battle, right? These children, when trained and guided correctly, will take your place one day as leaders. Sharpen those arrows with godly guidance, acceptance, and loving direction. Proverbs 22.6 in the New Living Translation says, very familiar verse, direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it. Not just collectively as a group of children, but as individuals. Direct your children individually in the skills and the interests that God has placed on each of them. I see parents today engaging children individually and collectively as a family. Both are needed. You, like me, know children are different. And in some cases, day and night different. Remember that when molding the young life that God has entrusted into your care. Dr. Martin Luther King said this one time, when you rely upon organization, we get what organization can do. When we rely on education, we get what education can do. When we rely on eloquence, we get what eloquence can do, and so on. But when we rely upon prayer, well, we get what God can do. Pray for and guide your children individually into a relationship with Christ. One of the biggest ways is your, in your children seeing how your relationship with Christ works. Talk to them about what God has done in and is doing in your lives. For years, I've had a saying, as as have many. I didn't come up with this. When it comes to children, a parent doesn't spell love, L-O-V-E. A parent should spell love, T-I-M-E. It's not your bank account or the size of your home. It's the quality, T-I-M-E, 
with your children, laughing and exploring and experiencing life together, that is one treasure that no one can ever break. There are moments in our lifetimes that will stick. Memories are made and will be remembered all of a person's lifetime. Around this time each year, thousands of young people graduate from high school the culmination of many memory-making moments for a 17 and 18-year-old. To the graduate, it probably couldn't get here soon enough, but to the parent, it's flown by. From the time a child begins to walk, it seems like a race just to see how fast they can move to achieve the next monumental event in their lives. From the first steps to walking across the stage to graduate, the sprint in life has begun. How did they get there? Many life moments tied together has created this life. Parents of the graduates have done the first part of the rearing of a child. Parents, those determined, tenacious children now enter into a new chapter of their lives. They have seen and experienced so much in their short lives, and the here and now is no exception. Here comes the difficult time for parents, the letting go. Even if it's off to a local college, the relationship will begin to evolve. Your child still needs you, just not every moment anymore. Those big life decisions, if you have a trusting relationship with them, they will come to you. Remember, they're not six anymore. Even if they don't act grown up, treat them as if they are. Life is full of responsibility. Guide them safely. There are still many life decisions ahead for them, and they will need you and your wisdom, not just now, but in the future. Remember to be the safety net when life slams them down or maybe heartbreak comes on them like a tidal wave. More than ever, pray for them, encourage them, call them, stay connected to them. Don't just wait on them to call you, you reach out to them. Remind them how much you love them and how much Jesus loves them. This phase of raising your child may be completed, but there's another chapter that you'll need to be very engaged in. Remember to always Point them to Christ. He should always be our guide and standard, not us imperfect humans. Reverend Billy Graham said this, and I'll close with this. People are the stock into which we invest our time. The best of all investments you can make is to help people come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I'm asking you today to not graduate but to commence, commence into a new life for God every step of the way.